I was living in Boston in my Gigolomance era, and I had found a 70s Stratocaster from a, a Berkeley School of Music kid. And I think he was trying to sell it to a store for $140 with a nice flight case. And I, I had my eyes on the flight case for my Stratocaster. So I said, I'll give you 150 And the kid sold me the flight case and the 70s Strat that had some issues. Um, and I kept the flight case for my Strat, went home to my hometown, and there was this beautiful guitar, and I traded straight across, I think it still has the price tag on it, for it was $249. It's a really special guitar. Unlike uh, a few of the other examples you'll be seeing in this video, this is a true hollow body. Um, the Gibson equivalent would be the ES330. It does everything from really sparkly, you know, Beatles-like jangle to a beautiful, throaty, almost Grant Green jazz tone. I think of all the P90 guitars that I've owned, this is the best set I've ever owned. They're perfectly balanced. Um, it's also the voice you'll recognize uh, from the Beatles. In the mid-60s, Paul, George, and John all got Epiphone casinos, and they used them extensively on Abbey Road, uh, Revolver, Rubber Soul. So it's a very familiar voice that is, has started to see some popularity again with the likes of like Jeff Tweedy from Wilco and famously Gary Clark Jr. from here in Austin, Texas. I had had my eye on one of these guitars for years. I'm a huge Beatles fan. Um, this is what you see a lot of George Harrison playing uh, in the mid-60s. The Gretsch concept that uh, Chet had come along with in the 60s was to paint on F-holes instead of having actual F-holes to control feedback. These are the Filtertron pickups that if you've never had a chance to play a guitar, you got to find a, a, a Gretsch with a set of these pickups in it. Not only do they have a beautiful kind of twang and sparkle that you'd think of for Chet Atkins kind of Travis picking stuff and kind of country flavored stuff, but there's just something about Filtertrons when you hit them with some gain. These guitars simply roar, and they will just rip your head off in a really beautiful, musical, throaty way. I found this one um, in Seattle, Washington. I had left Seattle and moved away, and I was back visiting friends and went into a shop up there, and here was this beautiful example with its original case, the original Gretsch strap still in the case, and I think they wanted $1,500, and uh, these guitars never show up for $1,500. So I grabbed it, and I'm so glad that I did. I I've used it a lot. I do a Beatles thing here occasionally in Austin, and it just, it has that sound. It has the authentic George Harrison thing, but also I've used it on a lot of records. It sits great in tracks, and it's just a super special guitar. I'm, I'm delighted to own this thing. I was making a lot of records out in Los Angeles, and. Uh, after I'd moved here to Texas, I was flying back and making records, and I hate flying with guitars. So I've got enough friends out there that I would just say, hey, I'm coming to town, can I borrow this and that? And a dear friend of mine um, was hooking me up with some great guitars, and he had a Guild Starfire 5 that he was like, man, you gotta take this guitar. I was making this really cool record, and uh, the engineer, you know, I knew that he knew his business and was probably a better guitar player than I am, so I hadn't played anything that had particularly impressed him yet, but at one point he had his back turned, and I, for the first time I plugged in that guild and hit a couple chords, his head spun around like it was on a swivel, he was like, what is that? And it just blew us all away, the sound of this guild, it was it, not a Gretsch, it's not a Gibson, it had its completely own tone that sat in the track in such a delicious way that uh, I just had to have one. I bought it as an eBay purchase, and uh, that can be kind of dodgy. If you don't get to hold a guitar in your hands, you don't really know what you're getting. This one arrived spot on perfect. The intonation was incredible. The neck is amazing. It's a truly delightful guitar. I, uh, I got just straight up lucky when I got this one. This is kind of my pride and joy these days. This is a modern Gibson um, that's uh, based on a 1963 ES-335 uh, that was owned by Rich Robinson from the Black Crows. When Hurricane Sandy hit New York, their rehearsal space got flooded and all of his prized guitars were under feet of water. So he took his 335 to Gibson and said, look, you, can you help me? And they said, no, we can't fix it. Somebody else can fix it, but we can replicate it. So they did a, a run of 500. Uh, I believe Rich has numbers one and two. This is number 36. And uh, I know there's a lot of people who question whether Gibson can still make a guitar, a good guitar. I, as you've seen, I've got a lot of nice guitars. This is my number one these days. I absolutely adore this guitar.